And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of the Las Vegas Hilton, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with stars and bars, weighing in at 226 pounds, this knockout artist has a professional record of 36 victories with 32 KOs against only one defeat. He comes here tonight from Kansas City. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the number two ranked heavyweight in the world, Tommy the Duke Morrison. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks and weighing in at 256 pounds. We have the 1968 Olympic gold medalist, who now as a professional is 72 and 3 with 67 KOs, which is the greatest knockout ratio in heavyweight history. Ladies and gentlemen, from Houston, Texas, presenting the former heavyweight champion of the world, B. George Foreman with a just happy to be here smile for the crowd as he was introduced. Now a bit of a scowl comes onto his face as he gets the game face on. Mills Lane awaits All right. the two fighters. All right, gentlemen, Angelo, and if he goes right here, I'm not going to call it low. Right here is going to be all right. Now, you've already had your instructions one time. This is for the championship of the world. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. And the question's here. Any questions here? Let's get it on! George Foreman and his camp did not want Mills Lane to be the referee. They wanted Carlos Padilla. The commission voted otherwise. Mills Lane considered one of the really outstanding referees. And perhaps for George, as suggested by one of the local writers here, a little too tough. In other words, not a kind of guy that George might influence to stop a fight when he wants it stopped. Right, Round number one. Here we go, Tim. I think we're going to find out early just how Tommy Morrison handles George's left jab and that little pushing movement that George has. Well, and speaking of the left jab, you feel it's something that Morrison does pretty well and should do more of, especially in this fight. Well, he said he was going to use his jab more in this fight, Tim. And he does have a very good solid jab when he uses it. Now you can see George pushing him off with those pushing tactics as soon as the fight starts. Watching for signs of tightness or the stage fright we referred to on the part of Tommy Morrison who knows this is a breakthrough fight, although he does not accept the fact that should he lose, that his career is over or that he should be dropped to the bottom of the barrel among the heavyweights. Most people feel he needs a win and a good showing here to be considered a serious title contender for the big guys, Bo and Lewis. Good left hook on the side of George Foreman's head by Tommy Morrison. That got George's attention. Now I'm surprised that George isn't leading with that jab a little more. He's chasing Morrison, but he's not throwing anything. considerable bulk and strength pushing back Tommy Morrison the 226 pounder the right hand by Morrison there were rumors that Morrison was knocked down in training by his sparring partner he denies that there were rumors that he had a bad right hand he said it was a sore shoulder and it was five weeks ago and that he's 100 percent fit Foreman, on the other hand, has been bothered by a sore right elbow in the last several months. And he claims to be over that. He accepts uh, all of these little aches and pains. It's just signs of old age. And Tim, so far, as I had mentioned earlier, George Foreman is just walking in, but he's not throwing any punches. He's not moving in behind that left jab at all. Good left hook to the body by Morrison. Body attack very much in Morrison's strategy. Let's see if he can stay with it. 
But Morrison has been using that left jab this round, as he told us he was going to do. And again, big right hand by Morrison. That was a good lead. He saw the opportunity. And again, you know, George is just walking in, not punching, Tim. <laughs> Under 30 seconds to go in round one. The more active Morrison in this first round. Combination just grazing the chin of Foreman. There's a good left to the ear. Foreman fainting, never delivered a punch. Another right lands to the head of Foreman. The end of round one. working pretty guys looking to sucker you just keep your hands up that's all it's all about really. yeah, nothing right. there give me the best thing everything pretty everything pretty oh, yeah. i see it angelo dundee george Foreman's corner seven seven two survive seven seven two ones Relax, baby. Doing good. any combinations go to the body first come up to the head bring his hands down Good, nice job. Real nice job. Good and relaxed. Good and relaxed. Keep that seven, seven coming back high. When you feel yourself in the phone, get out of it. Well, they gave Tommy Morrison the area code and the entire international number over there. Uh, Gil, decipher that for us. Well, the only thing I know about is a seven is a jab. Outside of that, I don't know. <laughs> well, they gave I get a lost bunch of the area codes. Now, let's see if George changes his strategy at all. In his first round, Tim, he looked like, he looked like a fighter that... <laughs> all of a sudden got old because he just didn't seem to uh, react properly looking for the opening looking for the opening but he's not firing you know that's what joe lewis said at the end of his career he said i can see the opening i can see the opening but by the time the message gets to my brain the opening's gone well, let's see if george comes out of that doldrum now and starts snapping that good stiff left jab good shot by morrison off the clinch that's a very mature play by morrison there and he scored it and that was one of those times when George did not push that right, that left shoulder of Morrison's back. Morrison looks very concentrated, very poised. I hesitate to say relaxed at this point. No, you can't relax when you're in there with Big George. Morrison already has a little lump under his right eye. Good right hand. Snap back the head of Foreman. That wobbled him a little bit, Tim. And George is, what George is doing right now, if he keeps doing this, he's going to really make Morrison work and hopefully tire Morrison out because George is not throwing too many punches at all. We're in round two, scheduled for 12. WBO title at stake, but much more to both fighters. Good left hook by Morrison. Good combination to the body. Roundhouse right hand lead fell short for Morrison. Why he needed to throw that punch, I'll never know, Tim. Those are the kinds of costly possible mistakes that he and his trainer, Tommy Burgess, hoped to avoid. They said they couldn't make mistakes against Foreman. Morrison pointed out to us when he had the interview with him that he says George has to set it takes him a long time to get off he says so I'm gonna I'm gonna get off first and beat him to the punch there's a sample right there and that's good what job. he's been doing since the fight started and a good stiff jab from Morrison now Morrison looks a little more loose to me Gil yes he does he seems to be saying oh look I'm having everything my own way tried the uppercut Forgot the jam. Yes, he led with the left hook. It served the back up for him, but did leave himself open. Hey, he's doing fine. Damn, what are you doing? Trying to get around. 
Okay. Deep breath. Foreman standing up as customary in the corner. Denying that the problem is he can't get up if he sits down. Now, you waited in the corner and you let him get off first. Uh, let's take a look at this replay here. Now they're coming out of a clinch. George pushes him, but doesn't push him hard enough. Gets nailed with a good left hook. There's that right hand, and that did wobble George. George's legs did a little dance. Well, he had a clean shot with that right hand down the pipe. His best punch of the round. Morrison has thrown 104 punches to 40 by Foreman so far through two rounds. Foreman the more accurate, 55%, according to our punch stat keepers of the punch. Round three scheduled for 12. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and James Brown live on TVKO from the Thomas and Mac Arena in Las Vegas. And now Morrison comes out using that left jab as he told us he was going to do and forgot about it at the end of the last round. And it just seems George's hey, hey, strategy hey, hey, is going to be hey, hey, to try hey, to wear up, Morrison out. Morrison warned for a low blow, but it was a nice combination. The left jab followed by a left hook underneath. <laughs> I think George is trying to put mental pressure on Tommy Morrison. A right hand lead, an uppercut that scored from Foreman, and a right hand behind it. But Morrison punched it back. And a good defensive move by Morrison underneath the right hand of Foreman. Something that Morrison camps as they've worked on since the loss to Mercer. Better defense, better jabbing, better movement. And there, another sneaky shot off the clinch. Well, again, George tried to push him, but didn't move him. <laughs> look, how long, look how long it takes for George to get off. He has Morrison in the corner, and he just doesn't get off. And Tommy's mouth is now starting to open up, and it's early in the fight. That could be a sign of fatigue. Or the tightness that he seemed to bring into the ring the first round and a half. He was asked about second wins. He felt he got one against Joe Hip when he came back from difficulty to win. Well, I thought he got a second win against Carl the Truth Williams. Uh, Tim, he looked like he was out of it. All of a sudden, you could see it, the second win to win the force. That was a good left jab from Morrison, although Foreman did not blink. And another good one. Foreman replies. Morrison looks more relaxed. He does look a little tired but he's more relaxed. <laughs> Round half left by Foreman. He did not land it solidly. A low blow by Morrison. He got away with the right hand. Under 30 seconds to go round three. And Morrison is really breathing heavy now, Tim. <laughs> really breathing heavy. Again, George is putting that pressure on, putting that pressure. Here comes George again. It's like that old joke, I don't know what it is, but here it comes again. <laughs> uh, Foreman can be expected to fight this way. Morrison and his camp knows it, and they keep saying, as they have preparing for this, we simply cannot make mistakes. Keep it slow, looking good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now. This is a man you took off. Relax. Relax. Calm down. Alright? Recovery is good. Recovery is good. The more you relax, the better off you are. Okay? Now, we need more punches. I need more sevens. Okay? That's what's going to keep him off of you. Fakes and flints when he gets close and you don't want to throw. That was that solid left hook to the body. Two good combinations. Landed one by Foreman, then Foreman taking two back from Morrison. You heard Tommy Virgits in the Morrison corner saying, I need more sevens. You could use those at the casinos here in Las Vegas as well, I guess, but they're a jab here at the Thomas and Mac. So there's one coming from him, and two more. Make the trainer happy. Round four. 
<laughs> Foreman dug a left to the body, but Morrison snapped a left hook counter punch and does it again with a good jab. And a good left hook by Foreman and a good jab by Foreman. Another good jab by Foreman. Another good jab by Foreman. Starting to back up Morrison with the jab. All right, punch out. Two hands are free. Look at that okay, strength of that George on, Foreman. Watch out. Morrison landed a left hook to his ear and Foreman just pushed him away. Now a short right inside from Foreman. Morrison punching back. It's opening up here in the fourth. Foreman throwing in combination now. Morrison trading, lands a right. Right hand lead from Morrison. Raise the nose of Foreman. Morrison works his way out of the corner and lands a left hook. The crowd getting into this as the fighters exchange those combinations early in the round. Get that elbow down. And here on the fourth, perhaps the real fight fans knowing they're in for a war here. Tim, one of the keys to this fight is if Tommy Morrison can make George take a back step. So far, George is putting all the pressure on Morrison, constantly going forward, pushing him back, moving after him again as he's doing now. Morrison is going to have to try to back Foreman up. Through three rounds, Foreman the more accurate puncher. 66% to 35% according to the punch stat guys. Just missing a big right hand was Morrison. Under 30 seconds we go in round four. Morrison back to the jab. Foreman lands the overhand right. Morrison missed with his. Digs to the body. Short right from Foreman. To Morrison's credit, each time he's taken that right hand, he's thrown one back of his own. I got it. I'll get the iron. Don't talk loud, please. No, I won't say nothing. I'm with you. Give me a... I'm here. I'm here nice and quiet, baby. Anything you want. On our jabs to throw our combinations. <laughs> we got to have head movement before and after your jabs. Before and after. He's starting to creep up on you in the corners. Gil, how do you see it through four? Taller. Well, so far, Tim, I have the fight dead even. Gave the first two rounds to Morrison, second two rounds to Foreman because of his aggressiveness and the pressure that he's putting on Tommy Morrison. To the punch, anytime you feel trapped, be into punch, fake splints, double seven. Keep fighting. Go. 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 That jab, baby. Now, punch stat shows in the jab category, Morrison landing only 28% of his, but it's still been an effective weapon for him. Just the fact that he has been throwing it. Right hand lead. Got through by Morrison. Low blow from Foreman and a good left hook by Morrison. Two good left hooks by Tommy Morrison and George didn't move. Those were Morrison's best two punches of the fight. And you can just see George putting that pressure on, pushing him back, pushing him back, as we had mentioned in the opening. Foreman weighing in at 256 to 226 for Tommy Morrison. Faints the right hand. Morrison throws a left jab out. Hush. Hush. Missed the uppercut, but landed a good left hook. And George's right eye is starting to close, Tim. You have to remember that 44-year-old skin that's being hit there. It's not as elastic as, as a young man's. Well, and he took quite a facial massage in the fight against Alex Stewart.
approaching the midway mark here in round five. Morrison in the corner. And escapes along the ropes and then turned back right into a right hand from Foreman. George, we heard uh, Foreman tell Angelo Dundee, don't say anything when he came back to the corner. He wanted no counsel from the veteran trainer. And Dundee said, don't worry, champ, I'm quiet. Well, that was very smart of Angelo. George keeps his own counsel. Unless he asks you, he doesn't expect any free advice. It's not free, Tim. Angelo can tell you. <laughs> Good point. I hope he does. <laughs> Got to keep him in sand and water down there in Florida. 45 seconds left in the fifth. Foreman throwing punches, but none of them damaging in that exchange. Morrison digs to the body without much power. Under 30 seconds we go in the fifth. Sneaky left hook lead by Morrison that landed. He's not been able to bother Foreman except with one shot earlier in the fight, round two. George just keeps walking forward. But not terribly effectively in the second half of this round. End of round five. Foreman plodding forward, but not really landing much in the way of scoring punches, in my view, in the fifth. I, I might agree with you 100%, Tim. I gave that round to Morrison. Okay, very good. Let me put it in mind. But we need combinations, punches and bunches. Lead with speed. Follow with power. Lead with speed, pow follow with power. Not sure what Morrison had in mind at that point where he turned back into the fray. Fortunately for him, he didn't take a clean punch. He tries to force the issue. I've, I've seen him lose his cool before Morrison, especially against uh, Paul Williams. He doesn't react too well when he gets hit with a solid punch. Morrison breathing with his mouth open as we begin round six, but he comes out firing. When he went back to the corner at the end of the last round, Tim, Tommy, Tommy Morrison looked very, very tired. Again, George is not being very effective. He's walking in without throwing too many punches, but he's keeping that pressure and in keeping Morrison working. He must have something in mind for later on in the fight. The left got through for Morrison. I think one question has been answered for Morrison, the aspect of his stage fright and ability to play up to this moment. A low blow from Foreman gets a warning from Lane. Morrison seems to be relaxed very much in the fight. Despite the possible fatigue factor, Gil, the Morrison so far has stuck to the game plan he wanted. Foreman doing what he does all the time, and that's just stock you. The only thing is, Tim, it's, it's really taking George a little too long to get off, even when he traps Morrison in the corner or against the ropes. But he is putting the pressures. I think he feels that Morrison is going to wear out. But meanwhile, would you agree Morrison is piling up the points? I, and absolutely. I think he's winning this round. I thought he won the last round. Combination from Foreman there. All right, let's step back. Have to go, guys. Come on. A little bit of swelling under the right eye of George Foreman. Damage. There it is again. And tremendous left hook by Tommy Morrison. Morrison with the left jab and the left hook has definitely created some swelling under the right eye of Foreman. And you can see again, George traps Morrison in the corner. Takes him a half hour to get off. Now, now let's take a look. He has him on the ropes. Let's see when George finally throws the punch. He doesn't. We 
you talked about uh, Morrison showing some signs of fatigue and Foreman trying to play on that. You have to wonder how far along in this bout Foreman can keep his pressure up without suffering his own fatigue. He's well, 44. It's easier to walk forward those him than to go backwards. Uh, believe me, good right hand by Foreman. Another right hand by Foreman. And, and Morrison, Morrison answers back. Yes, he did. He answered back with a good combination. Foreman gave it a little Ali shuffle on that right hand. <laughs> And a big left hand by Morrison. And a right hand lands. Nice variety of punches. He followed with the left jab at the end of all of that. Morrison, in my view, putting rounds in the bank. And the question you raise is, is fatigue going to be a factor in the second half? Halfway through. Right in halfway through. You're catching your second win now. Right now, we're going to catch our second win. Relax. Catch your second win. All right? That's what it's doing. That's what it's doing. Just in the right hand. Close your mouth. Being with a right hand hook behind it. Two, three punches. Stop him from coming back with nothing. The jab is everything, son. Everything. Oh, no, Set him up. You can hear Angelo Dundee saying to Foreman, the jab is everything, son. Angelo is old enough to call George's son. And Tim, Tim there was a nice combination from George Foreman. We go down the road, we go. Back Tommy Morrison asked for the stool to be positioned under him better. He is definitely tired. His trainer, Tommy Virgit, saying, this is where we get the second win. We'll all find out. Round seven. You better not get the second win this early, Tim, or you may need a third win. <laughs> Big right hand from Morrison, and a left hand, and another left. The uppercut scored. He can't seem to move Foreman back, but how much can the old man take? He lands a right of his own. Combination from Foreman, not a lot on it. Missed with the right, and another right hand from Morrison scored. This is a gut check for Tommy Morrison because George Foreman took his best shots and is firing back. He got thumbed accidentally on the right hand. Foreman landing with his thumb into the left eye of Morrison. No question, George Foreman is a competitor. After taking those punches, he fired back with the best punches he's thrown in the fight. That's when instinct took over. Morrison looks like he's gasping for breath now. But go when he's punching, he's punching with power, despite the obvious fatigue. Oh, he, he has power. He's got snap in those punches. Getting a little bit of rest here just by moving out of range of form and not taking the pressure. Not a bad idea. I think he's fought this fight intelligently to this point. <laughs> Banging to the body is Morrison, but a good right hand from Foreman. <laughs> and a left from Foreman that landed. <laughs> Little right hand lead, takes a left hand back from Foreman. Well, we had mentioned when Morrison can move forward, Foreman backward, that's when you can see that he's taking over the fight, and he has not been able to do that. No matter what he does, George just keeps coming. Two short, sharp punches inside from George. <laughs> Chopping right just grazed Foreman, but grazed Morrison, did not hurt him. Under 30 seconds in round seven, an uppercut from Morrison that landed. I would say one weapon of George's that has not been the usual factor it is is his left jab. Not the usual punishing weapon. He's not snapping that jab. It's in your right. Low blow warning to Foreman. Okay, Tommy. Here we go. Everything good, baby. Hey. You can flow. It's your fight. You're in control. You're in good control. I want you to take 30 seconds. All right? Give yourself 30. 
of movement. I have to have more seven. You let him come in there all day long just now without throwing your seven. His eyes are swollen shut. We I need your hands him. up. I need your position a little bit better and need more combination. Inside. That right hand lead from Morrison. Catching Foreman unawares. And a sneaky left hook there and that uppercut underneath. That's where uh, he got thumbed with that left hand from Foreman, but did not appear to bother Morris. His corner telling him he's in, he's in control. Gil, you're worried about stamina over the last part of the fight. If you were in his corner, are you telling him he's in control, even uh, though he may be? Uh, right now, uh, uh, Tim, I, I have the fight 67-66 uh, Morrison, one point ahead. But the, as the fight goes on, it looks like Morrison is uh, getting more and more fatigued. And 44-year-old George, very remarkable, taking those punches and continues to come forward. Again, Morris has got to say to himself, what do I have to do to stop this big guy? And so far, he has not been able to do it. Gil, if you know your man's ahead, but you think he's tiring, are you giving him the counsel they did, or at least the, the notion that he is in control? Or do you avoid saying that? Well, Tim, what I used to do, if my guys looked a little tired, I'd tell him the other guy was tired. And now George is really starting to... There was that snappy left jab of George Foreman's. That has been missing, but he just landed it there. But again, he, when he moves Morrison against the ropes, he doesn't get off. And Morrison scouted George well. He said it takes a long time for him to get off, so I'm going to keep getting off first all night. Low blow from Foreman, and Foreman the first to apologize, but the effect nonetheless... Built by George, Tommy Morrison. You get five, time. Now you heard Mills Lane stopping okay, the clock in the round. Five minutes. You can have the stool. And you telling Morrison that he minutes. has five minutes to recover okay. if he takes it all. That's the second one. Next time's going to cost you a point, okay? There's a look at it. And you, Lane you telling minutes. Foreman he'll Everyone's take a ready. point away. That's he had one previously. Next time we're crossing a point, no point yet, okay? He's not taking a point. No, no, he said, what I said, Gil, was that he warned Foreman he would take a point away on the no, next one. No, you can't talk to him. You can't talk to him. That's what I said to him. He's not taking a point away. Correct. Slow blow. No, but what he said to Foreman, Gill was that he would take a point away the next time because right. he's warned him twice. Hey, there you go. Hey, hey. Okay. Any time is... Time in, let's go. Let's go. If there's a flagrant low blow like that, Tim, I... I think he certainly should have taken a point. Ah, well, your, your point is he should have taken a point. Is that Absolutely. what you're saying? All right. Well, he, he simply said to Foreman, I will take a point away the next time. Action continuing in round eight. Good elbow. If nothing else, taking the pain, it served as a little breather for Morrison, who did not take the full five rush, minutes he rush. could have. Good left hook to the body by Morrison. Rush. And another good left hook landing. That rest seems to revitalize Morrison a little bit, Tim. Punching a little better. Under a minute to go now in the eighth round. Go ahead. Put the head in there. I have to admire the pressure, the fortitude, the stamina of George Foreman, but I've only given him one round and not quite as generous as you've been so far, Gil, in, uh, in this fight. The question mark that you raise certainly remains. Can Morrison go the distance? And that's a funny thing to be asking about the 24-year-old when he's fighting a 44-year-old. Well, it's a matter of styles, Tim. Foreman is fighting a relaxed fight, walking in, and the other guy's dancing all over the place and backing up. And that's what makes you tired. Now, I'm, I'm sure in George Foreman's mind, he thinks he won this round because he's been chasing Morrison the entire way. Through seven rounds, Morrison had thrown a hundred more punches than Foreman. We're going to have to steal each round now, okay? At the end, you're going to steal it with combinations. Now, look, he's slow. He, he's frustrated, but you got to start picking it up. Four rounds to go. We got that all day long, right? We got that all day long. Ain't nothing to it. You got to rest in between. Hell, you've never had that in practice, right? Okay, now, I need combinations. 
I need everything with speed finishing out of the middle, okay? Don't worry about me. slip to the middle. My short right hand. Okay. Just keep your hands up. All right, three, three Give him the mouth. All right, John. I got it. Close your mouth. Come here, son. A little more. That's it. I want you. That's Charlie okay. Scheib talking to George Foreman between no, rounds this time, no, asking no, him to slip to the right, throw short left down. hands. You heard the Morrison camp telling him they want combinations. Finish them up and don't stay there. We're into round nine, scheduled for 12. This being for the World Boxing Organization Heavyweight Championship, a vacant title. Devalued by some, but not by George Foreman. He says he'll take it. Big left hook by Tommy Morrison. A dandy. Splattering the sweat from the brow of Foreman into the seats. And the right hand by Morrison. Foreman, a good combination, and he's getting some chance from Tommy. Tommy in the crowd. There's a new move for George Foreman. I think he's worried about the sweat on the canvas there and the possibility of slipping. It looked like he was trying to dry out the soles of his feet. I'll tell you one There's thing, George does not get discouraged. He's right back after Morrison, no matter how many times Morrison hits him. Morrison landed a low blow without a warning. I'm still looking for a good couple of snappy left jabs from George Foreman, and I don't see him. There I saw him. There's that uppercut by Morrison. Good shot by Morrison. Matter of fact, Morrison is landing most of the clean punches. There you can see George pushing, pushing those shoulders back that he does so well. But again, he moves Morrison into the corners, and he just can't get off. Can't get off. Look how he stays there before he punches. And a badly timed shot from Foreman there. Landed a left behind it, but not much power. Morrison jabs his way out. Morrison looks, has a worried look on his face now, too. a minute to go in the ninth. Good combination from Morrison. Buys himself a little time by moving around the ring. You know, he's had that mouth open for a number of rounds all the way back to the third. But I don't think his fatigue has hurt him so far and we're into the ninth. He's still punching with power and in my view has been in control of this fight. Morrison goes to the tent. That'll look be how, the longest he's gone. Look how long George before George gets a punch off. Had him here for about Never 20 seconds. It. Never threw a punch. And there it takes a short it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a shot off the clinch and Lean gives him a warning. But Morrison has done that two or three times to effect. They say protect yourself at all times, Tim. Good jab from Foreman. They have been infrequent. Morrison won back of his own ending round nine. I got it. Don't worry. You'll have everything. Hey, hold that. Everything's fine. Close your jab and keep your hands up. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah the man keep my right hand with left hook, right hand. One, two, three. And just spinning. Don't worry about the body shot. Champ, let oh. him go. Get him in the face. Throw at the gloves. Get him out of there. Don't let him creep in on you. Okay? Everything that has sevens, move away, set up. Set up quicker, set up quicker, making time. Let's take a look at this action in the clinch there. And you can see George trying to push Tommy Morrison away. And Mills Lane stepped in and Morrison hit him with a right hand right on the chin. Morrison showing effectiveness despite breathing heavily in round nine through 42 punches, landed 55% of them. The 37% for Foreman, who threw only 30. Good left hook by Morrison again. Again, we had mentioned that Morrison has so many physical advantages. He's got the hand speed, foot speed, and a punching power. But, it, I, but George, I know, takes a tremendous punch, and I didn't think Morrison was going to be able to take uh, some of these solid punches, but George hasn't landed too many. 
But Gil, we're in the 10th round. Would you agree that uh, old George needs a knockout to win this? Well, I, I have Morris tonight three, three points ahead, Tim, so if Foreman could win the last the last two or three rounds would have a very interesting uh, score. But, he landed uh, a good left hand, but just grazed Morrison with the right behind it on the cross. But it takes him so long to get off, Tim. Morrison scouted him perfectly for this fight. That was a good stiff jab by George. Now, there have been a lot of skeptics, a lot of doubters about Tommy Morrison. I think they have to kind of come around here, should he win this fight, to feel that he has fought intelligently and kept to his strategy. Morrison, Tim, was affected by that right hand by George Foreman. It didn't look like a big punch, but it bothered Tommy. And another low blow, that one to the kidneys. Mills Lane doesn't agree with him. He was bothered by that. Now let's see how George reacts. He and M Morrison wobbled a little bit, Tim. Yes, he did, off a short left from George. Another low blow from Foreman he gets away with. And here's George pushing him back into the corner. But Morrison escapes. Morrison trying to keep his feet under him. Throws a combination without a lot of zip. <laughs> That's a little better, a right hand behind the left hook. Foreman missing. Morrison over the top. Under a minute to go in the tent. And George's right eye is really starting to look angry now. Big swelling underneath that right eye. And they're booing Morrison for moving away. But it is an effective strategy. Well, those are Foreman fans, no doubt. A good right hand by Morrison. And a good left by Foreman. That blocked Morrison. Morrison comes back with a right of his own. Morrison's hands are down more here. He's in jeopardy. Another low blow by George. That's going to cost him a point. And that does cost, cost him a point. One point off. One point off here. One point off. Come on, come on. Big right hand by Morrison. Final seconds of the tent. Roundhouse left misses. See that low blow by George Foreman. Morrison answered nicely with a good left hook on the button. It did cost Foreman a point. And there's a very good left hook back as Gil described. Into the 11th round. New territory here for Tommy Morrison. No count, right? You better be ashamed of yourself. And again, uh, you had mentioned that George Foreman did not want Mills Lanes, the referee, that one point he took could be a, a, a key point. How's your scorecard now, Gil? There it is. 97-94, Morrison. I have Morrison handily ahead, having given only one round to Foreman back in the fourth. Now you can make the case for him stalking and leading the attack, but Morrison has been the busier fighter. 402 punches to 338 through 10. Well, you know what it's like. It's like a, a cat and a dog. The dog chases the cat into the corner, and then the cat scratches the heck at him. That's what Morrison's been doing. Moving back, moving back, gets trapped in the corner, but then he gets off first and lands the clean punches. But how about your concern uh, earlier that uh, he was showing fatigue that might be a factor in these late rounds? Well, uh, this corner man told him he was going to get a second win, and it looks like he did. But again, he better not need a third one. We're in the 11th, scheduled for 12. And you see, by. again, George had him in the corner. Morrison got off first. George just walks in, walks in, doesn't punch, and Morrison 
nails him with some kind of punch or the other. Here's George walking in again, walking in. And then he lets Morris in out without much resistance from that corner. And you know, Tim, they say uh, fighters get old all of a sudden. George didn't get old, old all of a sudden, but you can certainly see the signs of aging in this fight because it's taking him so long to pull the trigger on any punches. Even if he, even if he happens to get lucky and win the fight, there's a big difference in this George Foreman. Big left hook off the clinch again. Morrison's done that well throughout the fight. That left hook missing. Under a minute to go on the 11. Well, Morrison now, Morrison, I think, feels he's got the key, Tim, and he's very, very relaxed. He knows what he has to do. He's got to get through this round and one more round. Here comes George again. He's got to say, and again, George walks in, and Morrison does the punching. Here's George again, coming again. Now, let's see how long it takes him to get off. Doesn't get off at all. Morrison now throwing punches from all angles. Right hand leads, left hook leads. He's abandoned his jab. In George's mind, I, he probably thinks he's winning these rounds because Morrison's retreating. But he's retreating and George is getting nailed. I don't see how Foreman can believe that, although Angelo Dundee tried to convince him of that during the last break between rounds. And Morrison is breathing heavy. Very good. Last round, there ain't no more. Keep your hand. There ain't no more. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands, hands up. He hit this boy. He's about ready to quit any time. But he's getting room. So keep your hands up and get toes to us. A lot of combinations, okay? <laughs> I need you. He's going to come at you here now, okay? Everything you coming forward on, okay? Seven, seven combinations. Get on the inside. Be tight. Be tight on the inside. Look for you. They doing that. Just don't blow your nose. Last round now, champ. Ain't no more. Don't let him turn his back on you. Punch. You understand what I'm saying? Telling him Steal the last 30 seconds. That's right. They telling him he's got to knock out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. How do you do? And final round. A good round sign by round. Morrison coming up that stool with some enthusiasm and here. Final right round. Into the final round. And you got to believe the way uh, we have been viewing it that Tommy Morrison may be on the verge of ending the career of George Foreman. Foreman could choose to continue should he lose here tonight, but that's highly unlikely. He has indicated that a loss would send him into final retirement after his glorious career, especially the second round of that. Morrison cannot afford a mistake. His corner says, be tight, be close, don't leave yourself open. And he lands a good right hand. And Tim, Knowing George's mind the way I think I do, if he loses the fight, don't be surprised if he doesn't say he's going to fight again. As for a rematch, maybe. But George Foreman, 75 fights in his illustrious career, only three losses, maybe looking at number four at age 44. For Tommy Morrison, it would get the monkey off his back. Silence the skeptics. Good right hand by George Foreman. Short right Good hand. Short right hand. George Foreman showing that great championship quality, doing all he can. Is it enough? Hasn't backed up since the fight began, but has taken most of the punishment. Timmy's a physical marvel. At his age, to be able to go these 12 rounds, is He even had a word for his corner there. We couldn't make it out. George headed to a sitcom heaven there at ABC when his fight is over here. It began in July. Hook by Tommy Morrison. Combination. Again, George is really frustrated now. Really frustrated. He's trying, he's trying, but he just can't seem to be able to put it together. Under a minute to go in the fight. You can just see Tommy Morrison getting off first, beating George to the punch. No matter how long George has him trapped on the ropes, Morrison still beats him to the punch. And Morrison... Good left hook. Good left hook by Foreman. It was a good left hook, but I don't think as punishing as it appeared. 
Orson had his hand up, and he kind of leaned back on the ropes. Time. Here's a break for Tommy Morrison. Loose tape on, loose tape on Foreman's glove, and Morrison happy about this development. A little breather for Morrison. That was a break for Tommy Morrison. And again, it could again add to the controversy of Mills Lane. Although he certainly did the right thing by stopping the fight and fixing that tape. And he didn't put the tape on George's glove. Just following the rules. I don't think there can be any controversy, and it's loose again. They didn't repair it well. And he calls time with 11 seconds left, but they keep fighting. And Mills Lane lets them fight. All right, all right, hey, move it, move it, move it. Time, time. He's calling time again. Right. And the bell sounds, ending the fight. It really doesn't matter. It is moot. Tommy Morrison with the look of a winner. The 24-year-old from Kansas City. One, oh, only one defeat on his record, that at the hands of Ray Mercer, but a lot of skeptics about his ability. And no doubt some of those will be saying, well, if he won, if he wins this, he should have been able to stop the old man. But we saw how tough, how strong George Foreman still is at age 44. What a competitor he is, Tim. He almost never wants to face defeat. And Angelo is esteeming George up a little more, telling him he was right about Mills Lane. How have you got it at the end of the fight, Gil? Well, Tim, I have Tommy Morrison winning by a wide margin with the point deducted. I have uh, Morrison 117, Foreman 111. I didn't give him any credit for his aggressiveness because it wasn't effective aggressiveness. He chased Morrison, chased him, and when he caught him, he got nailed. You got to throw punches for sure. He didn't throw enough of them, in my view, either. I thought Tommy Morrison fought a very intelligent fight, stuck with his plan, and I think he uh, deserves full credit for a victory I expect he's going to get. <clears throat> Let's find out if he did. We'll go now to our host, James Brown. All right, Timmy, thank you very much. And as we await the decision from Michael Buffer, three things come to mind. Quickly, all fight fans certainly know that George Foreman offered some advice to Tommy Morrison after that fifth-round brutal beating at the hands of Ray Mercer back in October of 1991. The question is, did that advice come back to haunt George Foreman tonight? Number two, a much more serious work ethic displayed by Tommy Morrison tonight. He was in excellent shape. We'll get back to the third point after the most important point, and that's the decision. Let's go back down to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you the winner of this bout will be the WBO World Heavyweight Champion. We go to the scorecards. Dalby Shirley and Patricia Jarman both score the bout 117 to 110. Jerry Roth scores the bout 118 to 109 for the winner and new champion, Tommy the Duke Morrison. in fact may have had that advice come back to haunt him Tommy Morrison I think answered an awful lot of questions the third point that I was going to make Tommy Morrison has said repeatedly that he did not want nor like the label of the great white hope he said he did not like the connotation but in fact he knows that it has an awful lot of benefit associated with it, but he proved it in the room, in the ring, that is. And as we take a look at what the final punch that revealed, Tommy Morrison followed his game plan superbly, delivering on 46% of his punches, but they were very, very well executed, especially delivering that left hook 
when it was needed. As we take a look at the jab, well, you heard Gil Clancy and Tim Ryan say he needed to deliver that a lot more, although he did not connect on as much as George Foreman. Nonetheless, it was quite effective. And right now, let's take you back down ringside to Tim Ryan. Thank you, James. I'm with the winner here and the new WBO champion, Tommy Morrison. You did a great job in this fight. Uh, you were in control all of the way. I think the only thing that we were wondering about as the fight progressed seemed to me that you got tired early. Gil Clancy thought it might be a problem late. It proved not to be. Can you talk about that? Well, one thing that we concentrate on is uh, pushing ourselves to the limit in the gym. When you push yourself to the limit, you get to know your limits as a fighter. And that's one thing that hurt us prior to the Mercer bout. We'd never been past the sixth round. But we did a lot, a lot of extra work to try to prepare for this because I knew it was going to come with someone as big and as lumbering as George. He fought a hell of a fight. Just a matter of just a little younger and a little quicker. Well, and you stuck to your game plan, I thought, very intelligently throughout. What did George say to you at the end when he came over to your corner? He told me that I did a hell of a job. He told me, God bless, he loved me. And he said, never, cr never cuss in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, good counsel from a guy who certainly been a credit to his sport and brought so much life into the heavyweight ranks. Now people are going to expect the same from you, Tommy. What do you want to do right now apart from rest? Well, at this point, I'm going to go home, relax for about a week, and then I'm going to continue working. Because uh, one thing that I didn't do prior to the Mercer Bow is I didn't uh, always utilize my time the way that I should. As a young athlete, sometimes that's difficult. But I'm a more dedicated athlete at this point, and a more mature athlete, and I'm going to prove it to the world. It, it seemed like, uh, from what you told us yesterday, your trainer, Tommy Virgis, you had a game plan to jab, to move, to be intelligent, not make mistakes, and you carried it out. One thing that's... Uh, George Foreman is very, he's a very hard puncher and he has a devastating jab, but one thing that he can't, you can't let him get set. And that's one thing uh, uh, that the jab did for us is, is make him reset each every time that he's set. All right, we've got George Foreman here who has already congratulated you and given you good counsel not to cuss in public. Uh, George, uh, uh, is this, I'm sure the first question everybody wants to know, you lost, is this it? What about wife Joan and what are you going to do? Well, I've got a date with Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> and it's those buffalo wings that I'm interested in. now. A lot of people like that original chicken, but I'm against it. I like the crunchy fire. After fried. you eat the chicken. Yeah. Then I got a date to eat some wieners because I'm cooling out on a hamburger. It's going to be two hot dogs in one bun, and I'm going to eat my head off. I've had a great stay in boxing. I've enjoyed it. It's a wonderful time. The people of Las Vegas have always come out in numbers to see us fight. We are so happy about the turnout, and it was a good fight, 12 rounds for the first time. A fight went a long time. The people are proud. 